if you are the attacking or the bombing team, your spawn point is right about where my hand is. So if this, obviously, if the camera wasn't here, it's going to be about in here. If you've played our map before, it's the orange or the near side spawn. Uh, I've numbered all the doors, one, two, three, four. Uh, bomb site A is in the middle of the castle. Bomb site B, if you look off to the left side of this picture, is the letter B represents bomb site B. You have a five-player team. Let's keep in mind, one of the most important parts is sprinting off the start. If, once the whistle blows, once the round starts, if any of your teammates are not in a dead sprint for the first at least two seconds of the start of the round, you're going to lose that. I'm telling you right now, you're going to lose that round. Because the most important thing is who can get to the bomb site first. Who can get to their site, who can secure the site, and who can prevent the other team from getting there and imposing whatever their will is or accomplishing their objective. If you're the bombing team, the attacking team, who starts in the near side spawn, all four of your guys need to dead sprint into bomb site A. The fifth guy uh, can is going to run side sec uh, security, for basically flank protection. So you notice off to the right side where the purple is, player five can move there and sort of secure that side, or they can go to where uh, closer to bomb site B and start fighting those guys off. It depends on whatever you want to do. If you go in the uh, the yellow or the left side where uh, 5A is, you're most likely going to be encountering more of the defending players because those defending players are going to set up a defense for bomb site B, so you can start picking some of those guys off. I've numbered the doors 1, 2, 3, and 4. Door 1 is the door your guys are going to be entering through. In these corners, they're also numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4 with colored arrows. In my opinion, corner 1 and corner 2 are the most important because corner 1 is covering door 4. Door 4 is the is most likely typically door number 4 is the door that they are that the defending team who starts in the in the top left corner of this picture they are most likely going to be coming from door 4 and door 3. That's why corners 1 and 2 corner 1 has the green arrow pointing to door 4, corner 2 has the red arrow pointing to door 3. Uh, those two are going to be the most important. The other nice thing about players 5 on the purple or on the yellow side is they are also covering doors 2 and door 3. So, there, so there's at least two guns on one door. You don't really have to worry about corner 4. Uh, so I've numbered the corners 1, 2, 3, 4 for the, in, the order of priority, basically, or the most important. Corner 4, you don't really need it. You don't need it because door one is your door. So unless uh, 5A, unless your fifth guy is 5A and unless he gets taken out, you really don't have to worry about it. Because door, if they go through door one, your defense failed. Something has failed you if they're going through door number one. Because that means they got behind you. They flanked you. They swept you. And they're coming in. They're taking your back. But all you really need to do is rush in at a dead sprint. One guy plants the bomb, and the other three guys plant in corners one through three. That's it. That's the easiest way to do it. And uh, the guy on the outside is going to be protection somewhere. I recommend that the medic not be player five. Medic should probably either be the bomb carrier or, most importantly, the guy who's going to go up to corner two. So corner two should be probably the third, do the third fastest, basically. The first guy through the door should be a gunner. That gunner should be hosing walls and clearing the way out uh, for the bomber. The bomber should be the number two guy. Three guys should just be either be a medic or another player. And then your fourth guy should either be another player or the medic. Before the bomber plants the bomb, you need to have corner one and corner two set and ready to go. Once that bomb is planted, uh, the bomber can either go to three or four. I don't recommend doing double duty on a corner. It's not needed. You've got full auto guns. You know what you're doing. Don't put two guys in one corner because every corner has a purpose. You need 360 security in that door. You also have no business looking out the high windows. You get in a corner, you kneel down, and you hose any and everyone that comes through that doorway. That's it. You wait for the clock to run out. Now, here's the other nice thing about player five. Let's say player five is on the, per he's on the right side. He's running purple side, and he gets taken out. Once he starts calling for a medic, you know, or reasonably know, 
that there is at least a player or a certain amount of players that are trying to take you out from that side. If you don't hear anything on the left side from player 5A, say your 5A guy is in, in play, and you don't hear anything from him, they're probably going to the other side of the map. But that's the, that's the advantage by having all four players in the middle and a fifth player as a skirmisher on the other side. That fifth player is your intel, either directly by shouting out player positions, or once he dies and starts counting, starts shouting out medic, you know where their players are at. Also, once the shots start firing, you know where players are at. You know where everything is because you can hear them. But four dudes, four dudes run in the middle, dead sprint. Listen to me, dead sprint. If once that whistle blows and once that round starts, all five of your players are not in the fastest sprint of their life, you're going to lose that round. Because the bombing team's objective, the way to win this match, is to be in the bomb first and plant the bomb first. Because that is what will put the defending team on the objective. When in, in the MLA format, once the round starts, the defending team automatically starts with the advantage. Because all the defending team has to do is just keep you from planting the bomb. That's it. They don't even have to shoot you. They don't have to kill you. They have to prevent you from planting the bomb. You don't really have to fire a shot to do that necessarily. If the attacking team is just hesitant to move because they're afraid, afraid of getting hosed, great, they're going to run out the clock. Once the attacking or the bombing team plants the bomb, the, the advantage then goes to the attacking team because now the attacking team turns into defenders and the defending team turns into attackers because they have to attack their way to the bomb to defuse it. That makes sense? It should make sense, because that's the right way to do this. Let's talk about what you're looking at at corner one. Bam. Here's part of corner one. Uh, you're going to be pretty... Con you don't really have to worry about the doorway, uh, because there should be coverage on that door from corner two, and we will look at that in a second. There's a small window just beyond that door where a player could catch you at an angle uh, but it's just something you're you're gonna need to be very aware of that also you should be kneeling notice I have the red line uh, at the top of the building you need to be crouched if you're standing you can get popped off from a distance because look at the structures beyond the red line you can get shot in the face if you're standing by a far by a player that's closer to the spawn point that's just how that angle is gonna work out here is what corner one needs to be concerned about, that doorway. And there is also, it's hard to see in this picture, but that's why I put that red circle on it. If you look at that red circle to the right, that is the window. That is the doorway of the most importance. That's why the bomber needs to not be concerned about doors or windows. And the first guy through the door needs to be the corner one player. Because the corner one player needs to prevent all players from from all defending players from coming through that doorway. And that's also why the corner two guy needs to be set in place as well so he can prevent players from coming in from that left side door that we just talked about. You don't, as the corner one player, because of the way that the doorways are formed, corner one does not have to worry about that doorway. Notice how if I'm looking at this doorway straight ahead as the corner one player, I can see straight through the door. I don't have to worry about door three. That's the We're looking at door three right here. I don't have to worry about that because my corner two player should have that under control. Here's what corner two is going to be looking at. The door three and that window off to the right because you can get shot clear through that. So as long as corner two is sucked back deep into this corner pretty well with that right side protection with the rifle on the left shoulder, they'll be fine. No one, it's going to be very challenging to get a player out in that deep corner if they're playing their coverage in their barricade game right. You don't now, off to the left is going to be the door your team came through, or door number four. You really don't have to worry about that door. That's the door you just came through. You should not have to worry about that door for quite some time because you just came through it. And at the start of the round, it is almost impossible. If you're playing your strategy right, it should be impossible for the defending team to come through that door, through door number one, after you guys get all your stuff set. But corner one and corner two 
are the most important because they're going to protect the bomber and they're going to protect each other. You need that 360 protection, otherwise you're going to have a lot of problems. What we're looking at here is door number three. Corner three takes door three. That's the one off to the right. There's also a window there. We're not worried about door number four, which is the door way off to the left, because remember, that's what corner one has. We're working on that 360 protection. So when you're in a corner, when you're a corner player, you are not worried about the door to your left or to your right. You're worried about the door that's basically straight in front of you. You don't have to worry about what's next to you. You need to worry about what's in front of you because what is next to you is being covered by the player to your left or to your right, by someone else. Don't do someone else's job. And here's what corner four is. This can usually end up being uh, the bomber if you want it to because if you see to the right, that little trough area, uh, that's where the bomb's gonna be planted. The doorway off straight across, kind of to that far right, is the is the doorway you guys came through because if in the top left corner if you can kind of make it out that's where your spawn point is so all corner four is doing is really just protecting your back that's sort of it we're not worried about the door to the left because that's door three and that's being covered by the player to your right at corner number three we're not worried about that and again as long as you're not standing up you really don't have anything to worry about all you have to do is get in a good kneeling position and suck back to that left or right coverage depending on where you're at. Once the bomb gets planted, you're going to expect a rush. They're going to try and come from all angles. They're going to try and take you out from the window. They're going to try and do a lot of things. But as long as you can just stall them for the 90 seconds required until the bomb goes off, you'll be fine. As long as you have your internal security set in a 360 manner and as long as you have that one player that's protecting either your left or your right lane, you'll be okay and you're also listening here's another thing once you guys get set and once the bomb is planted no one should be talking you keep your mouth shut for the most part realistically no one should really be talking at all except the outside player five because that's the player that should be calling out where the player positions are at and once that player goes down and starts calling out for a medic that's all the communication you need. That's your intel. Once you get in the castle, why do you need to talk? Why? Your guns are going to do the talking for you. I don't need to say anything as long as I'm doing my job. As long as I'm doing my job, I'm going to shoot, and that shooting is going to tell you where the players are. You can listen for other footsteps. You can listen for movement. All you have to do is sit still and shut your mouth. And the other team will tell you where they're at with their footsteps, with their communication, with their gunfire. The, let the other team tell you where they're at. Don't say anything. You can do this without saying a peep if you're inside the castle. Once you get in the castle, shut your mouth. All right, here's the plan if you want to attack bomb site B. I personally don't recommend going to bomb site B, which is off to the left if you haven't figured that out because it's easier to play deep corners uh, for protection and security. Then you have, there's a lot of angles, there's a lot of guys kind of staggered and all of the, over the place. It's not as easy to take and hold bomb site B as it is bomb site A because of the deep corners. Before the bomb gets planted, you need to set that security. Unless you have a, a bomber that is just so fast on their feet, they can hit that dead sprint fast and get to the bomb site B faster than the defending team can defend it. If that's what you got, use it. I don't recommend uh, player one is a bomber. Player one needs to be your point guy. That needs to be someone that's right there, ready to go in place. You notice I have player, a lot of this is going to be off to the left. So you have three players, uh, player one, five, and two, playing basically the site security. Players three and four, who are in the middle and the right side, are really just protecting the left or they're trying they're stalling for time player four is more or less preventing a sweep that's why all their their whole job is to stay in one main area and just hose players and pin them down and keep them from sweeping and taking the back if player four goes down there's a pretty good chance you know that a sweep is coming that's okay because if we look at player three they can either take the angle in front of them or they can pick up the angle off to the right and they can act as a secondary line of defense once player four goes down. 
That is player three's job. Player three is kind of like shortstop in this manner. They're kind of in the middle. They can they can back up second base. They can back up third base. It's kind of like your shortstop player. Uh, they're very diverse. So player three needs to be one of your more experienced players who can transition from left to right side coverage very easily. So you can see player two off to the left with that red arrow. Player two is covering the doorway, which is where that bomb is. Player one is covering that other door and hallway. Player one can also cover the, um, it, you can kind of see that it's sort of a U shaped or like a backward C. Player one can either cover the front or they can also kind of run protection on that long haul also in that snake hallway. Player five is going directly to the bomb site. Or if they can't go directly to the bomb site, they're making every effort to get there. But you have to be aggressive with going to that bomb site. I recommend either player two or player one be the medic on this one. I don't recommend having your medics be player three or player four because of the nature of their position and because of the fact that they're alone. So if you run a medic on player four and he needs to go heal player one or two, they have to abandon their post, run all the way to the other side of the map, heal them, and then hopefully be able to fight their way back to their original position. That's, that's too much. That's too much to do. Medic needs to either be one or two. I recommend Medic be two. It's a personal recommendation. Because you can sacrifice two. You just make player one have to do a lot more work. It, that's something you can do at a pinch. But player one's gonna, that's going to be one of the more important lanes, which we're going to talk about. And I'm going to show you why in a second. This is what player one is looking at. Uh, it's pretty deep. You have that one window that opens up a lot. I recommend you play to the left side of this board. I do not recommend you play to the right side of the angle because if, let's say you're, you're playing to the right, you're using your left shoulder and your stand back and you're real hard to shoot from that angle down the left window. If you look off to the right, there are several deep layers of buildings, several angles that, several angles that you could be shot from. I recommend you switch your rifle to the right shoulder and play the left side of this behind that left side board. If you want, depending on how you guys are set up and depending on what the other team is doing, you can fight your way uh, on that right side hallway and kind of push up a little. That's fine. But you need to under if, as long as you understand what the layout of this map is going to do and as long as you understand that you're, you're doing more than you need to. Remember, all you have to do is the perimeter security team for the for the bombers is just hold a lane and wait for the bomb. After that bomb gets planted, you can shift and move around a little bit uh, because all you have to do is just stall for time. Here's what player two is going to be looking at depending on how deep you want to go. Uh, they have the a better line of sight on that doorway. And depending on how close or how far you are is going to dictate whether or not you're going to be covering that doorway better or the window better or both you can play both angles as long as you understand that that's two different windows or two different lanes you can be shot from but as soon as you have this little piece secure you need to send your bomber in because that bomb is going to go right on against that gray board on the outside of the structure i'm not putting that that b bomb inside of that building because it's too hard for my refs to officiate it that's why it's there, because when I'm placing bombs, it needs to be in a spot that is going to be easy to ref from. All right, so that's how you attack. Let's talk about defending. I've got it in pretty much two positions. I know there's a lot here. I'm going to go through it. If you look at the top left in defense position one, you're starting to set up coverage and defense for bomb site A. Defense position two, which is towards the bottom middle of this screen, is setting up defense for bomb site B. You kind of have to wait and see what the other what the attackers do. Within probably in the I'd say the first five to ten seconds, you're gonna know where where the bombers are gonna be. They're gonna let you know most likely because they have a certain amount of time before they have to get that bomb planted. I don't recommend going forward of the bomb sites because there's just you have to cover too much area. And I mean, if the team, if the attackers are that bad, yeah, you can. I recommend setting up in these positions, getting these strong angles that I'm going to talk about and holding. Let's say the attacking team is going to bomb site B. What you can do is if, as long as you have defense position two set up, you can have those two players, player one and player two in defense position one. 
you can have them push that and try and sweep around. You can do that too. As long as you understand that you're going to have to go a little bit slower, move a little bit carefully, because there's probably going to be someone protecting those angles, preventing you from doing that very thing. Uh, if you look at player three in the middle, uh, player three is, again, kind of like a shortstop. They can either play player three or player three A, and I'll show you these important angles in a second. For defense position one, this is a pr an another good angle to see, so you can kind of see what the windows and doorways are looking at. Uh, players one and three are really focused on that first corner, that corner one on the attacking side. Uh, if you look at also the player three position, if you look at that three alpha where they're at that I didn't put in here because I totally forgot to do it because it's a free video, so what do you want? Uh, player one and player three are really controlling that doorway and that angle as corner one. Player two is really more concerned with more just preventing a sweep and also defending player one. So player one and player two are kind of like a sniper spotter team in the sense that player one is the sniper, player two is the spotter. Player two is really just running protection and sweep prevention. This is what that player one, player two position is looking at for defense position one. You notice on the right side, you can clearly see all the way through that first, through that far side corner and through what's going to be corner one if they're the attacking team. That's a really important corner. And it also picks up a little bit of the bomb site as well. This is a very good angle to have because it's direct line of sight. But you're exposed to that left side window, which the sun sort of messed up when I tried to take this panoramic picture. What do you want? I did this off my phone. So because of that left side window, that's why you have to have player two. Because if the attacking team just sweeps that angle, they're going to take you right out. Here's a better look at what that position one, person one is doing, is you have a real clear line of sight to that corner to eliminate those players, and potentially to, to fire off any players that try and walk through there as well, like a bomber after they plan if they want to go to their position, maybe someone was slow to get into corner three. So this is a really strong angle you want to keep and hold. Here's what you're looking at for defense position one, person two, is it's just flank protection it's sweep protection that's it all you're doing is protecting the person on your right because that person on the right or player one has a really important angle that your team needs to keep and hold all you're doing is just protecting them from getting swept here's one of the angles for uh, person three you'll notice it's still an easy spot to get to it's one of the most i say it's one of the most important angles because it's so close it's probably the closest and easiest to get to right off the break you can sprint straight there, and you have a good piece of that first corner. And again, that's a really that that corner needs to be contested over a lot from both attackers and defenders. Here's the overview again. Now we're going to talk about defense position number two, which is going to protect bomb site B. Notice there's two players set up in a pretty important spot. Uh, one is covering that little doorway, which has that real straight angle that we talked about when we were attacking, and really just we're protecting up strong angles. The nice thing about this is player three can kind of bounce back and forth to either defense position one or two, depending on what the attacking team does. Also, depending on how you want to run it, let's say you know they're going for bomb site B. You can either have player one and two that would be assigned to defense position one, either rush and try and do a, a long sweep and just run the perimeter, or you could have player one just sort of chill there and have player two come back and reinforce bomb site B and they can try and do something. There's a number of ways you can do it, but your def let's if the attacking team is going to bomb site A, the guys in defense position 1 is player 1 and player 2, those are your skirmishers. Meaning, you can have player 1 abandon that angle cuz they're not going for that site anyway, have player 2 hold in place and they just leapfrog. They just leapfrog over and over and over again. So, uh I would say player 1 could sweep behind and start rushing and then player two is sort of waiting and seeing if any of the attacking teams are going to try and come out and focus on uh, player one you're basically fishing at that point it's a little bit of cat and mouse but it's not a bad way to go or you can just run direct reinforcements to bomb site b it's what, whatever you want to do whatever at the time you think is going to be the strongest position to take here's position one again it's that straight window and that straight long doorway 
There's a couple of far angles through that doorway you want to worry about, kinda. But this is a really strong position to have because the bomber has to cross that angle in order to get to the bomb site. You can take that bomber out. All you gotta do is just hold that angle, tuck into the left side, have that rifle on your right shoulder, and then just hose him down when he runs to the bomb site. Here's defense position two. Uh, the, the picture came out a little wonky on this, but you, you could get the idea of it. The bomb is on the other side of this wall. It's not inside the structure, it's outside the structure. Again, it's easier to ref it that way. And depending on how close you want to get to that doorway, you can also run secondary protection as well. But what you're doing from being in position two is preventing someone from coming through that doorway and taking out your other player or your, your teammate. And that's it. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, whatever, or just, you know, go away and unsubscribe. I don't care.